everyone, this is PC Death Gear, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi. Last we left off, of course, we're back to talk to Oishi again and learn more about Rena's past in that conversation. All while Rena's scaring us by holding her axe. In my case, it's a machete. Just an odd shaped one. Above our head right now, about to swing, guys. So, anyway. Villager at the foot of the mountains worship the ogres. So, Oga Onigafushi was hollowed ground that you could never enter. It came to be said that it, if you entered carelessly, you were cursed by Orishira. Those who set foot in Onigafushi, in other words, the town, would be cursed. I can understand that. I know that. But for leaving to also be no good, that's also the ogres you see. They were being strictly watched by Orishiro, so they would not enter into our world. In other words, Orishiro probably restricted interaction between Onigafushi and the rest of the world. I see. I finally understood what sort of thing Orishiro was. So basically, Orishiro is more like a warden than a protective deity, I guess. Trying to keep this place isolated from the rest of the world. So, uh, if anyone from the town, or those who were ogres, came to our world, basically they got cursed. I guess that's how I would see. I'm sorry, I don't know very much myself. This is mostly what was passed on to me from my grandmother. I can understand it a bit better if it was like that. Those who came to the town would be cursed. Those who tried to leave would also be cursed. So because Rena originally lived in town and moved away, she fulfilled the requirements for being cursed. So that means because Rena moved away against its wishes, she was cursed by Orishiro. Is that what it adds up to? In short, that seems to be what it points to, I guess. As a matter of fact, soon afterwards they did move back to town after all. Those who abandoned town and left were cursed. But then why only Rena? Shouldn't Rena's parents also have been guilty of the same transgression by moving away and have been cursed? Also in this day and age in Japan, shouldn't there be a lot of people coming and going? If every single one of them was cursed, then it'd be insane. But in reality, it wasn't that big a deal after all. At all. At most, there would be one person dying and one disappearing. On the day of the Maganashi. I don't like saying at most though. Well anyways. There's a lot I still don't know. Even if it was Urshio's curse. It doesn't add up as to why her classmates the victims. Who are being with a metal bat. Wouldn't press charges. You don't think the victims were cowering. Because they believed that a terrible curse had been fallen them. Do you? Of course, I didn't want to believe it. But more importantly, I had just realized something else. There was another bizarre, bizarre connection that Rena made between Urshio's curse and Metal Bats. Satsuchi fell victim to Urshio's curse and went missing. So now we're seeing that there's a connection with a Metal Bat and Urshio. I recently learned that Satsuchi had also became, become Fluctuated with the metal bat right before he disappeared, just like me. Then Rena as well. She was affected by Orishio's curse. She confessed that much to the doctor. The weapon which she had used at the time was that horrendous, and of that horrendous act was, again, metal bat. So now we're thinking, okay, now metal bat has this connection. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to keep going here. And finally, me. If I keep going, I'll ruin the other chapters in the anime. For those of you who have not seen the anime. I've encountered various things that were inexplicable. And now I was holding onto a metal bat. I was shocked when I learned that such she did the same thing. It couldn't be. Had the same thing happened to Rena. But there was one critical difference between her and such she's case. That being such she went missing after falling victim to curse. But Rena was still here. So Rena came back. Both of them have fallen victim to Urshiro's curse, yet they were met with different endings. And finally, me. 
Couldn't call it a coincidence anymore. Marina, Satoshi, if I like me, could it be that I really was under Urshiro's curse right now? No, more important than it. What should I do now? Satoshi had been demoned away, vanished without a trace. Rena was fine. Fine. Rena had undergone a change. I could only believe that there was something that R R wasn't Rena reciting within her. And here, right now, it was standing before me. So now we're back in our own time. We're not reminiscing the past. So now Rena's back in front of us. Yay! Rena, please tell me what will happen to me. Rena stood impulsively, not answering. Satoshi disappeared, but Rena didn't disappear. So, what will happen to me? <laughs> Again, her laugh. All I'm going to do is a quick little, ah, that's it. I had never heard such an unpleasant laugh before. It had become akin to the sound of her breathing. Oh, great. That was no longer a voice or an expression of feeling. Don't worry, I'll save you. Rena took one step forward, still holding the axe high above her head. Now then. Now then. Sorry, wrong voice there. <laughs> one step closer, Rena's face spread out to fill my vision. Speak. One step closer. Rena's nose was close enough to touch mine and was still pushing closer. There's something you want to say, isn't there? I'll listen. I'll save you, okay? Speak, okay? Speak, okay? God damn it, her and her repeating. Slumped down, landing square. I slumped down, landing squarely on my butt. <laughs> it wasn't for some pathetic reason. It was all I could do to get more as far away from Rena. And again, her laugh. <laughs> no, stop with the laugh. You're going for the whole screen with the laugh. Almost. I had a feeling that I couldn't let her laughter in. Because when that laughing ended. Uh oh. The moment I picked up on that feeling, my body moved by instinct. Sprung to my feet. So. F wow. So fast I couldn't even believe it and pushed Rena away with both hands. Rena was as light as a feather. Oh well, yeah. She... Drawn about by the unbalanced weight of the axe, she was sent backwards as if she had been carried off by the wind. Okay, I'm just trying to remember which way the axe was. It's still vertical. It's above her head. It's not where it'll stab her. She falls. <laughs> They're confirming that out of the corner of my eye, I dashed off at full speed. I was the perfect picture of f fleeing like a greased pig. Get away from Rena. Run away. Survive. Couldn't think of anything other than this. While I was running, I remembered I'd been holding onto a bat the entire time. Such a worthless weapon. I couldn't believe I'd forgotten about this weapon at such an important time. I sped even farther down the winding path. I didn't feel myself gasping for breath or my legs getting heavy. My body understood it as well. If I didn't run away from here, I wouldn't live. Oh, yay. Fire flight instinct. He's just pumping with adrenaline. So I'll feel that pain later. <laughs> I could hear the laughter of that similar color of Rena coming from behind me. It rang through the trees and in my head and slowly chiseled away at my sanity. The grow trees then now my fellow vision suddenly expanded. Where was this? For a moment I was bewildered by the scenery I felt I knew but couldn't quite remember. I quickly realized, oh yeah, we're at the dam. It was a dam site. The fact that I dashed madly and ended up in a place like this gave me a bad feeling, like I was following someone's scripted plot. I had a view, good view of my surroundings, but I didn't see a single soul here. This was a terrible spot for someone on the run, but there was no better place for an attacker. 
Hey, Timber. Just my heart was already on the verge of bursting. God damn it! I don't know why I keep doing that. The miracles in my legs were sh the muscles. Wow, miracles! <laughs> muscles in my legs were screaming, but I didn't care. When I stopped here, then they might not even be able to scream for much longer. Even still, I glanced back, looking for an excuse to rest. Rena wasn't there. Said I saw two villagers walking around. I raised a sigh of relief that it wasn't Rena, but a third party. Except the voice inside me rang the alarm once again. Villagers walking around weren't suspicious in, of themselves, and it bothered me. They both wore rough looking clothes. Empty handed, they definitely gave the expression that they were just out for a walk. But at this summer day, two adults wandering around without a purpose. It was enough to raise questions. But more than anything else, those eyes. They weren't chit-chatting while walking. They were both silent. Heading forward, looking in my direction. Was I at the end of my rope and had finally started imagining things? I should run away. Damn fly gal here. That was probably the best choice. If they weren't involved, I would lose them easily by running. If they were part of the group after me, then they would come running after me. Your way, unless I hurried up, Rena would catch up with me. That's right, I was going to run. Deciding that the moment I began to turn to her tail, both of them rushed towards me, so they knew exactly what I was thinking. Somewhere inside me, I had jumped to the collision that Rena was the only thing I needed to be afraid of. I made the assumption that I didn't need to fear anything else. Wrong. But right now I realize just how blatantly wrong I was. Suddenly, the story Oshi told me about the demons at all leaving the village to hunt prey floated through the back of my mind. I could tell they were both coming after me without even turning around because they're afraid to go steps. For those who don't remember, the story that Oishi was saying was do not interrupt the hunt for the demons will come after you too. And that's what Kiyichi is referencing there. It was frightening being unable to shake Rena off as she slowly closed in on me, but this didn't even compare. Being pursued with such violent ferocity, this straightforward horror was unparalleled. One of the pursuer's arms grazed my shoulder. Now, it wasn't just their friends, footsteps, but also the distant sound of the breathing that I could hear. No, I could practically feel them breathing on me. They were already right behind me. Calm down, KH in my bar. Still running at full tilt, I felt the surrounding area go still. No, it felt like time itself had stopped. Turned my head back slightly in that frozen world, realizing how close my pursuers had gotten to me. I couldn't win against the legs of an adult. In less than the time it would take to blink twice, when this frozen time began moving again, they'd be right on top of me. On top of me, and then... Don't think about that, Keiichi. First realize that you won't be able to shake them off like this. If the fact that you can't get away was a given, then you need to make a decision. Wow, rhyming. Go with the right leg or go with the left. You just need to decide which one. Let's go with the left. The moment I say that, it's it. the temporal singularity bursts into pieces. So, immediately time starts moving again. Right? Left. I swung the bat in a wide arc with my right arm. Using that inertia, I stopped and suddenly spun. What? Two of them were clearly startled. Momentary losing sight of me, both of their outstretched arms ready to grab me instead, grasped an empty space. Man in the right, I applaud him being able to figure out, spun around to the spot I shouldn't have been. And faced me in astonishment. But it was too late. I didn't even need to swing my bat. All I needed to do was extend my arms as I turned around. It was by no means a heavy blow, but it seemed like it had enough power behind it to knock him off his feet. But it just knocked him down. Wasn't but just knocking him down wasn't enough to scare him away. I can't talk, why? He got back 
up in no time. Both of them took a fr fighting stance and were ready to face me. This made me certain they weren't just two people out for a walk. They were clearly after me. I felt much easier than dealing with Marina. Just by not recognizing their faces, by not knowing them, it made the things easier. I smiled wearily on the inside. What do you want with me? Next one's going to be right in your face, you bastard. Finally, we got some swearing. It's fine if it's if it was just a bluff. But barking out at them, I was able to fire myself up. They didn't respond. They spread out to either side of me with unbelievably calm expressions on their faces. One of them would grab onto my bat and the other would hold me down. Was that their plan? Taking on both of them at once would be impossible. Hot sweat poured from every pore in my body. So I gave worked sweating like crazy. Then I just have to sell it with the first move. I'll step in and strike the first one down. Narrow my target down to the man on the right who had already been knocked down before. I stepped and swung with all my might. There was no way for an unarmed person to guard against it. It would cause immense damage. They blocked it with their arm. Their bone would snap like a twig. They turned their back to it. Then it was possible to, that the blow would travel at a way to the vital organs. It looked like he was aware of this. He pushed farther through the kill zone between us and delivered a fist right into my gut. Not good with this distance at the, in this position in this state. There was no way for me to dodge it. And we got hit. The world flipped upside down. I understood that I was being tossed around like a rag doll. I landed on the soft, the soft earth without sound, feeling the granny soil press against my face. It didn't hurt at all. But the moment I thought that I saw it felt pain coming from my from the abrasions on my skin, as well as the contents of my stomach being forced upwards, filling my mouth with a bare sensation. I knew very well that I didn't have the time to relish this experience. I stood up as quick as I could, but at that moment the other man was already barreling towards me. Being able to comprehend calmly that I simply couldn't dodge it made it all more upsetting. After plowing into my stomach full force once again, my assailant twisted around behind me and locks his thick arm around my neck. Oh yeah, he chuckled. My throat felt like I was being crushed by his immense strength. I couldn't even contemplate that I was being strangled or that I was about to go unconscious. My vision suddenly darkened and a silent whirling noise began playing deep inside my head. I took everything I had to keep myself from blocking out. While this was happening, the other man was more than likely standing in front of me. I wasn't able to open my eyes, but I could feel that he was there. There was nothing I could do now. Unable to shake this arm off me, I couldn't run. I couldn't fight back. Dire strats, I couldn't even come up with the phrase that accurately described my situation. And we blacked out. Uh, why did we? Come on. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we blacked out. I'm wake up in our house. What? Okay. There we go. A familiar settling. Smell of the bed and pillows. I knew them well. Was this my room? No, there wouldn't be anyone in my room besides me. But their presence made me spring wide awake. When I did that, pain shot throughout my entire body. Ah, shit. I know where we're at. Uh, this should be your one or two more episodes after this. Yay. Feeling alright? I think you better just lie down for a bit. While I was Rena in my room, blood began to surge through my muscles and my capillaries. But Rena's smile belonged to the Rena I knew well. I knew I shouldn't let myself feel this way, but I relaxed thinking that this version of Rena was safe. What well, am I? Don't you remember? After losing consciousness, 
After losing consciousness, nothing at all. I'm just going to end this episode here because I believe this next episode should be our last. Might be two. I don't know. But I do hope you're all enjoying this series. If you are, please hit that like button or make comments below. I don't really care if you're, you're subscribed, but if you want, you can. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually enjoying this series. It's added things to the anime, what I know about Higurashi that weren't there. Um, but anyway, this piece is out there. As always, hope you enjoyed. Keep playing on. See yous.